Good morning again. Here we are for another day of a digital devotional as we uh, are living through this season of, of quarantining. And so uh, I'm glad you're with us and uh, hope that this is a huge blessing to uh, your relationship with, with Jesus and the walk of faith that you're, you're, you're going through during this time. And so uh, the, the opportunity is and, and the encouragement is for us to know that we're not alone, even though we may be displaced physically in in-person contact. We, we're still connected. We're connected by the Holy Spirit who indwells all of us who, who know and love the Lord Jesus. And so uh, as a reminder, <clears throat> what we're doing is we're going through this uh, Lenten uh, readings. Uh, we're, we're on a, a day today where we're going to be looking at the passage in Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. And uh, part of the, the theme that is resonating, at least through this week, is uh, what it is to pray, how to pray, why to pray, and the, the joy and the benefit of praying as we prepare for Easter. And so as we turn our attention to God's Word, I invite you, let us pray together. So let's bow our heads and our hearts in prayer. Lord, at this time, we give our attention to your Word we ask, God, that you would speak to us, that you would minister your grace to our hearts. Lord, that you would free us from anxiety and worry and fear. And that, Lord, we would be assured in your sovereign hands, you as the one who have made the creation, you sustain the creation. Lord, let us know peace that seems to pass all understanding this morning. Lord, in your word, speak by the Holy Spirit to our hearts and to our lives and equip us to be vessels, ambassadors of this peace and this joy to our families, to our neighbors, and to the nations. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. So our passage, like I said, is in Philippians. It's chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. And so I'm going to read it for you. You can certainly follow along with me. Philippians 4, verses 4 through 7. This is the Apostle Paul. He's writing to the believers in a city called Philippi. And it, this is a, a fantastic letter. It's a letter that it superabounds, overflows with joy. And in this place... Uh, He's going to tell us a means by which we can engage in joy and then how joy can be that which flows out of us. And so, verse 4 of chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. What a powerful word that is. And he starts right out at the very beginning. You might notice right at the very beginning, he says, Rejoice! And then he says, let me tell you again, rejoice, rejoice always. And, and it, we don't hear it the first time, maybe. We got to hear it a second time. And, and smashed in between these two rejoicing statements is always. And, and what's fascinating about rejoice is rejoice comes from a, a Greek word that means to, to be glad, and it's gladness that's not forced, it's not faked, it's not, it's not uh, compelled uh, by, by uh, means against our will, but in a sense it is to, to be so filled that we can't help but have it spill and splash over to others. It's rejoicing is gladness that comes from being filled with the fullness of God, and it can't help but spill over 
into uh, the lives of other people. You know, you're going to pour a drink and and you get so caught up in conversation or distracted by something and you just keep pouring and pouring and pouring and pretty soon it's spilling all over. Now, in our household, that leads to some stress as we worry about, you know, what are we going to do when the milk is gone or or now we have to clean it up. But, but in this sense, God is so filling us with his joy and we're so enamored and focused on him as the source of our joy that it just keeps pouring and without knowing almost it flows over and touches and becomes a blessing to others. And so he says, rejoice. Let me tell you again, always rejoice. And, and so always is, is this kind of thing. It's, it's perpetual. And, and it's not something that ebbs and flows. It's something that, that starts the moment the joy of God begins to flow into our life. And, and it's perpetual in the sense that it starts at one point and then it continues forevermore. It's one of these things that once it starts, it never stops. And that's the always overflowing joy of God in our lives and in our hearts. And so he says that in verse 4, rejoice in the Lord. Again, I'll say rejoice. And then the rest of these few verses, verse 5, 6, and 7, are, are spelling out, are, are uh, describing in greater detail the effect and the importance that this perpetual rejoicing will have in our lives. And in verse 5, you might notice right in the text there, he says, let your reasonableness, re reasonableness your gentleness, your sensibility, your, your level-headed lifestyle be known to everybody. It, 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 the, 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 the joy that we have, the rejoicing that continues and starts and, and overflows in our lives will be not only recognizable, but it will make an impact in the lives of others around us. He says, you will be reasonable to everyone. And then he says in verse 6, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. It, that, that this rejoicing will lead us then perpetually in prayer to pursue God and to pursue God in such a way that situational and circumstantial anxiety no longer uh, occupies the driver's seat of, of our thoughts, of our desires, of our emotions, of our words, actions, so forth. I have to tell you this morning, before I, I came into to the office and, and recording this uh, devotional this morning, I had to run to the grocery store. We're running low on on dog treats. And of course, as we're quarantined, we're probably all eventually going to run low on a little bit of everything. Well, I run to the store and I'm watching people fill their carts with, with stuff. And I start to think, well, maybe I should get some stuff. You know, I, I, I see milk. Well, I better ga grab a gallon of milk. I, someone, they, they roll out a big pallet of, of meat in boxes and they're going to restock the shelves. I'm thinking, well, maybe I should get some meat. And so seeing other people, having my eyes on the circumstances around me and what others are doing started to stir in me anxiety. Rather, what I had to do is in those moments say, Lord, you're my hope. You're my trust. You are my joy. And, and that does not necessarily free me from or, or prevent me from then taking steps of responsibility and say, oh, yeah, we could use some, some, some food for dinner or those kinds of things. But, but the, the circumstances do not become the driving reality of my life. Instead, rejoicing in the assurance that God is faithful and good. And so I had to come back in those moments, walking around, pushing a cart, saying, the Lord, I had to pray. So I'm practicing this myself, is to pray. And so he says, don't be anxious about everything, but in everything by prayer and petition, supplication, let your requests be made known to God. And then verse 7, he says, all of this then, this rejoicing always, rejoice, show your, your gentleness in your life. Now let, it, let the joy spill over of your life to touch those around you. Continue to perpetually be uh, driven and invited and, and have your life flow from a, a prayer invested relationship with the Lord. Not driven by circumstances, Paul then says in verse 7, uh, then the peace of God, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Rejoicing in Jesus leads to peace in Jesus. 
All of this, all of that we're talking about this morning results in the peace of God in our lives. And God's peace is always contrary to the ordinary experiences of those who do not live to rejoice in Jesus. It's, it's going to look different. It's going to sound different. It's going to sometimes be weird. It's sometimes going to be bold. But remember, the peace of God will then be the antidote to the anxiety in our lives. Uh, sort of a, a, a wordy, nerdy way that I put this as I wrap this up is rejoicing in the Lord shifts the interpretive framework by which we respond to the experiences of life. And all of this to the extent that our ultimate focus as we live our days, our ultimate focus is not only on the immediate, but on the eternal. And don't we need that today? I mean, we are, we're seeing the stock market yo-yo up and down. We're hearing, you know, toilet paper. There's a run on toilet paper. You can't toilet paper. Uh, on and on and on. And, and kids are not going to be in school. They're talking not just weeks, but months. And, and, and it's easy for these things to begin to drive at us. These circumstantial realities begin to drive at us and, and fuel anxiety. And what we have to do is we have to come back and rejoice in the Lord. Always rejoice. Seek the Lord in prayer. Let him become the interpretive framework by which we experience and we respond to all the circumstances of life. For he, God alone, in Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, is our hope and joy. Friends, let's pray. We certainly need this, Lord. We need the assurance of your peace that passes all understanding. And God, we do not want to be those that are carried away by every, every shift of the wind and every circumstantial concern. And, and this does not mean that we do not have consideration of our circumstances. This is not an escapist approach, but Lord, it is a, a, a rooted faith approach whereby we know that our lives, once we trust you by faith, are held in your hands secure, and safe. And so, Lord, I pray that you administer your grace to our hearts, that we would be those that rejoice in you always, seek you in prayer perpetually, and that we would be overflowing as a blessing to others, and that peace that passes all understanding would guard our lives in Christ Jesus. And as always, Lord, I pray that that would be not only for our benefit, but it would be that through us we could share that as a benefit to others as we do so for your glory, and we spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to our neighbors and to the nations. We ask in your name, Lord. Amen. Well, please be sure to share this video, like this video, set up notifications so that you can continue to keep up to date as more videos are posted. Uh, we, we are so grateful that you're a part of this time together, and uh, please uh, send me a comment, send me a note, let me know uh, the way in which this is a blessing in your life because I want to know that God is true, truly at work in your heart and in your mind and your life. So thanks so much and I'm praying for you.